Hi YouTube, what's up? I'm back with part two of my Hamlet vlog. This is only going to be in one part, but now it's in two. And the reason is I'm trying to keep uh, both these videos under an hour. Long story short, me just reading Hamlet and talking about Hamlet got to be very long. And I don't want to make you sit through like a two hour video of me just trying to explain to you my feelings about Hamlet. So this one is just me telling you about the two films we watched for my Shakespeare Perform class. So we watched two adaptations of Hamlet. Yeah, so I've seen in my life many versions of Hamlet. I have seen several Hamlet films and whatnot. In 11th grade when I read Hamlet for the first time, my teacher, my AP Lit teacher would put on the Mel Gibson Hamlet when he would be like out. Um, so I've seen that all the way through. And then I've seen Hamlet starring, starring Ethan Hawke as Hamlet many times, and that's the one I'm going to be talking about with you today. David Tennant as Hamlet, Campbell Scott as Hamlet, Kenneth Bragg, how do you say his name? It doesn't matter. And in 2015, I've seen Hamlet staged live. I saw it at the Willow Theater starring, oh, what is her name? She was so cool. Zainab Ja, and it was directed by... Blanca Ziza. Ziz Zizka. That's a handful, right? Ah. And I don't know the actor's name, but we just watched Hater. And so the two films I'm talking about today are uh, Hamlet, uh, directed by Michael Amareda, and Hater, directed by, directed by Vishal Bardwaj. Both excellent films. Michael Amarita's Hamlet came out in 2000. It is set in 2000 in New York City. It says, New York City, 2000. It's a great film. I watch it for fun. It has such a special place in my heart. I'm so charmed by it. It has a lot of like things from my childhood that I miss and it feels very 90s in a lot of ways. It stars Hamlet as Ethan Hawke and Julia Stiles as Ophelia and lots of other uh, people are in it as well. Also, Casey Affleck uh, gets his face, I think it was Fortinbras, uh, for <laughs> those of you who wanted to know. Here are some things about this version of Hamlet that are charming to me. So first of all, Hamlet is a film student. He is played by Ethan Hawke, who is about 27 years old, and this uh, film is, I think, trying to talk about what happens to young artists and especially like the curse of 27 so like lots of young artists uh, die especially per in particular kill themselves at 27 years old which makes the film extremely upsetting and that's something i learned the other week and it means that hamlet falls prey to this like curse of 27 at the end of the film I find the fact that it takes place, uh, and pretty authentically, I think sometimes uh, adaptations of Shakespeare struggle with authenticity, they don't feel real in their setting, especially um, they don't feel like when you set it in the olden times it doesn't feel authentic, when you try to bring it into more modern times it doesn't feel authentic. Uh, I think this one is really grounded in its setting and that makes it feel really authentic they change just enough to make the setting feel like it's a part of the characters. So Hamlet's a film student um, and he comes home from school to get upset that his mom is banging somebody else and he, his girlfriend, his girlfriend Ophelia, Ophelia is like, she does photo, photographs, she has like this whole studio apartment that's like just dedicated to being a dark room. It's like very cute. And uh, Hamlet also has this, he um, has this apartment uh, that he like lives in, but it's like gross. It's truly like the grossest place I've ever seen it because there's like one room with like a bunch of paintings like not hung up and no other decorations and like furniture that never looks like it gets sat on. And then like the rest of the house is a disaster. It's what my like living accommodations more or less look like. And like as you go deeper into his like living accommodation, it gets messier and messier. Oh my god. So like 
you're like, oh man, like this living room's got like a lamp just like on the ground with like the lampshade like off of it. Like he's like, that's a sock. Like that's a whole ass sock on the ground. And then you like his bedroom. His bed is obviously not made because why would Hamlet have a made bed? That's ridiculous. And there's just shit everywhere in his bedroom. It's hysterical. The film basically opens in Act One, Scene Two at like a press conference and Claudius is giving like his speech that he gives in Act 1 scene 2. Hamlet is not like sitting down, he's not paying attention, and Ophelia keeps like trying to pass notes to him but Laertes is giving them both the evil eye. A lot about this film feels very intimate that um, <laughs> what happens to them doesn't really affect like the outside world, like nothing, nothing that they do like really matters. Um, and, and that I think is like a strength of it. Uh, as an adaptation that you take something that feels very uh, big and grand and important and make it uh, very intimate and um, very much about like these these kids who are growing up in the public eye and have a lot of expectations on them but <laughs> they don't necessarily like like Hamlet dying is sad but it's like not gonna ruin lives I mean it's gonna ruin his life that their relationships, the relationships between uh, Hamlet and Ophelia feel very intimate and uh, at times claustrophobic, which is a good thing. A lot of the strength of this film for me is that it feels very claustrophobic because it takes the device of the play, it takes the device of the play and makes it into a camera. So the, the way the play operates, the play within the play, but also the way that you as an audience member operate within Hamlet um, operates the same way that uh, Hamlet's own camera operates. And you actually can see uh, this device also operating in other versions of Hamlet that are pretty recent. David Tennant's comes to mind. In David Tennant's Hamlet, uh, they use a security camera as a this audience member uh, that he's being watched. One of the, this, there's this huge change with the order that things happen in Hamlet. Hamlet gives this speech and it's an act two. I know it's an act two, but I'm not exactly sure where. It's his, uh, and yet to me, uh, what is this quintessence of Dutch dust speech that he uh, delivers to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. I feel like this is a huge change and I feel like this is a change that is indicative of the rest of the changes. So, um, at the beginning of the film, the film opens with Hamlet delivering to his own camera I have of late wherefore I know lot wherefore I know not lost all my mirth he does the whole speech and he does it he does the whole thing uh, to his camera um, so this sets up two things one Hamlet is duck doing all of his soliloquies not to the audience the way he would in a stage production but to the camera which is more or less the same, but it takes this speech, which is not given to the audience, um, but two characters, two characters that he is pretending to be crazy for, and makes this speech more authentic, gives it more authenticity than we could necessarily assume it would have in, the, in a regular staging of the play. What also happens is that Hamlet does not give every single one of his soliloquies to the camera. When you do it as on a stage, I think you are often stuck, always wondering if Hamlet is crazy. Because even when he gives his soliloquies to the audience, he's still giving them to the audience, and it's still in lots of ways a performance. So in David Tennant's Hamlet, um, he takes down the security cameras, and at that point you can assume that it's no longer a performance. The only time that you can assume that Hamlet is not giving a performance is when he is not speaking to his camera in this film. I mean, like, that's the function of Hamlet. Hamlet is ultimately a play about performance, that Hamlet is always worried that he's performing authenticity, and uh, Hamlet is a, is, a, is, is a play about performance, and it's about performing certain actions in a certain way, and. Uh, what's expected of us and how we 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 make good on, on these expectations that people have of us and uh, What happens in this movie is that sometimes Hamlet gives soliloquies to other people Sometimes he gives them sometimes he gives speeches to other people. Sometimes he delivers them to himself, but 
to a camera and then there's this third level where he gives them just to himself that they're either an internal monologue where he gives them out loud like he the to be or not to be starts as an internal monologue but then uh is given out loud in the blockbuster which is cute anytime that hamlet is speaking to a camera it has more authenticity than his his emotions and his thoughts in those me those moments are more authentic than the ones that he is giving to other people, but less authentic than the ones that he gives to himself, uh, which I think is a really interesting way to read this version of Hamlet. And that's what I think is most important. The amount of cameras that are in this really uh, highlight and emphasize this aspect of performance and uh, reputation that I think actually exists in the original play. Second of all, I would like to talk about Ophelia. Um, Ophelia is obviously like <clears throat> the best. She, they make like this beautiful like art ho couple and I just like adore them. And they're like a terrible couple, like they never talk to each other. The only conversation they ever have with each other in this whole film is um, the get thee to a nunnery. It's, it's truly my favorite get thee to a nunnery because I think it really exemplifies what like a violent misogynist Hamlet is and also so Ophelia is wearing a wire uh, because Polonius wants to spy on her uh, on him Hamlet he wants to spy on Hamlet and he sends Ophelia in to return Hamlet's little little like like love letters that he was sent to her and he obviously like he delivers the first one they start making out he delivers the first half of the speech they start making out he see he finds the wire when they're making out because he starts to undress her and he is so mad at her she like starts crying and leaves then he sends he sends her he leaves her two screaming voicemails as hamlet says to ophelia the way that he talks to her and when he speaks to her when he talks to her in this movie has a degree of authenticity that um sometimes he doesn't that ophelia lots of times is just another character he is manipulating that he's pretending to be crazy to when they're doing the mousetrap they when they're at ha the showing of hamlet's film of the mousetrap hamlet has this conversation he's like five rows in front of his mother and Claudius and so everything he says to Ophelia is just for her ears even things that are directed towards Claudius are just for Ophelia which makes her not part of like his roots like she's not part of it I really feel like this film did a really good job of showing what happened to Ophelia she is more silent than lots of other Ophelias and I think this is on purpose. I think that when she could have a reaction, when she could try to protest, when she's got her only like major speech, it's cut out of this film. And I think this makes her an exceptionally quiet Ophelia, but she's also got a lot of extra scenes where she's just alone on screen. She feels very silent. She feels like she just has to sit here and listen to these men in her life tell her things but she doesn't really feel like she has any power to do anything in her mad scenes she is uh, like almost a completely different person and there's this there's this theme in literature that madness is liberating is this um mode through which women are liberated sometimes they're liberated through silence but often they're liberated just through their madness and Ophelia's madness is not just a victimization of her it is the one true moment where she is she's like she breaks free from this the silence that's imposed on her that's impo imposed on her by the cameras by her father by her brother and it's it's her silence is broken because of what Hamlet does she she uses this uh, her break from silence to liberate herself and uh, she's loud she screams she goes in public and her her mad scenes are in public they're not private and uh, to the distress of Gertrude and Claudius um, and it's not just so much that they're worried about Ophelia they're worried that Ophelia is going to expose them and I just feel like her madness in this version of Hamlet is 
some some feminist shit like her madness is liberating to her instead of just being another victim also it makes hamlet and ophelia both it really highlights the fact that they're both they're the same in a lot of ways i mean like hamlet and laertes are foils but hamlet and ophelia kind of react the same way to their father being dead and knowing who killed them but ophelia is powerless in uh, what she can do about it she's she is powerless to do anything about her father's death because Hamlet is being protected. And in this version of the film, Hamlet is ostensibly being protected by from the law and she can't do anything about it. So the best she can do is go crazy in public and try to expose them. The last thing I want to say is that we shouldn't we shouldn't want to see ourselves in Hamlet like my professor posited for us that Hamlet, as always, is a play within a play. So the, this film, Hamlet, directed by Michael Amarita, is the director's internal struggle about like having to be, like having to go like mainstream and like not being able to like create his art or whatever. And well, that's fine. I, this is a word of caution. In fact, I, I think that we all can see ourselves in Hamlet. I think that there's a lot about Hamlet that, um, a lot about the way that he struggles with himself, with his faith, with his family, with, for me, with performing authenticity is uh, how I most relate to Hamlet struggling to find his place in the world authentically. I think that while we can, and that's why Hamlet is like a good play, like ultimately people still like Hamlet and they like Hamlet more than they like other plays. Um, and why I like Hamlet more than I like other plays is because Hamlet is us when we are, are most insecure. And he really is struggling with like being a human. So it doesn't matter like what personal, like what our personal struggles look like. like and that's fine. That's not what I'm like against. I think that if we want to start to try to like, be like Hamlet is the hero in this story, we're already on to like not a great start. It's already not a great start. Like he's not like the villain, but he's also not like, the hero. And then when we try to make arguments like I am Hamlet and Hamlet did nothing wrong. I really think you gotta like take a long hard look at yourself and how you can make him into such a like violent misogynist, somebody who is like not just like mentally ill but like mentally ill and has absolutely no intentions of ever taking responsibility for their own life. Just gonna like let it spiral out of control. How you can then be like, yes, and then I am Hamlet in this is just a little bit concerning. And so I think that there's definitely, that definitely parts of it are uh, the director, like, I wanna say personifying, but it's not the right word, but like personifying his struggle, uh, trying to remain an authentic like artist but I don't think that's like the main thing that we should take away from. I don't think we should want to see ourselves in Hamlet. Uh, and that's coming from me, somebody who loves Hamlet. The second film we, film we watched for our Hamlet unit, I guess, um, was Hater, uh, uh, which was directed by Vishal Bardwaj. It came out in the United States in 2014. It is like a Bollywood movie. It is one of the greatest films I have ever seen in my life. I loved it as like a film on its own. And uh, I loved it as an adaptation of Hamlet. It was so beautiful and creative. And and it follows Hader, who becomes troubled after discovering that his mother's new husband may be responsible for his father's death. He sets out on a path of revenge and soon discovers that his loved ones won't be spared either. This takes place during the 90s, the mid-90s, 1995, I think. Hader is a young art student. He lives away. It takes place in Kashmir and it is more or less about, I'm not very well versed on the history of this region, but the 
a struggle between the Kashmiri people and the uh, Indian Indian or uh, government at this time that there were rebels and freedom fighters and it was a very turbulent time and there basically there are people in Kashmir who wanted independence there are people who wanted to be part of Pakistan and then there were some people who wanted to be part of India and it was very turbulent and uh, a lot happened the film opens with Hamlet's hater's father and he is a doctor and he just wants to like be good at his job and he just like he took like this Hippocratic oath and he is going to treat people so he takes this patient who is the leader of like this I don't know like like a like a leader of their cause and he takes them back to his personal home and it freaks his wife out which is fair and she accidentally rats him out she she accidentally like rats him out and then he gets killed he gets taken prisoner and then uh is missing and is killed hater comes home is immediately upset by the fact that his mother's is very friendly with his uncle and uh i don't i think it's a really interesting film because it's a, like a delightful and creative adaptation of hamlet into like this different culture um that's like it's obviously not usually adapted into or at least not that i've seen according to the director the character Hashmir is hamlet he is struggling with what is right and what is expected of him and what his father wants to do and which one of these things is right and i think uh that's a really interesting take on it <clears throat> yeah um hater is very good i i thought that the ophelia character was really good and really well done Claudius's character was really well done uh hamlet was like such a sweetheart as he always is and he was definitely um one of the things that i thought was really interesting was that uh, it kind of turned the revenge narrative on its head, so Hamlet almost takes his revenge and then he doesn't, like at the end. Hater doesn't kill his uncle, he leaves him to uh, bleed out in the snow. Yeah, so Hater um, made this one huge change to like the general structure of Hamlet, like it's very different, but the major change that they made is that at the end of the film, uh, Hater almost kills Ham uh, his uncle, but then does not. He leaves his uncle alive, um, and there's a lot of like really interesting readings about it. It's ambiguous about whether this was even the right thing to do, about whether pacifism is the right way for things to go on. But the 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 first reading that you would get of this the end of this film is that Hader uh, walks away from killing his uncle because he has this new opportunity that Hamlet does not have at the end of the play to make a life that is free from this this struggle um but there's no real there's a lot of ambiguity about whether this is right or whether this really worked out for him because like everybody he knows is dead so also right before this um his mother the Gertrude character her name is Kasala I think blows herself up I in what seems to me to be an attempt to stop Hater from and doing the revenge on his own that right before her last lines to him are uh along the lines of that he that she's always wanted to protect him that her the number one thing that she's always like her main objective as his mother is to protect him and and, in, and to me her last act is really interesting um because it's i just think really the only correct reading but also the best reading of Gertrude drinking the poison at the end of the play. She sacrifices herself for her son's cause. And in the play, it's too late to save Hamlet. Hamlet is going to take his revenge whether or not he's already dead. Gazala decides it is not too late to save her son. And I think that she does take this last like desperate action and and kills herself and sacrifices herself for hater because uh that's like her job as a mother and i really just like fucking love gertrude all these bitches out here saying gertrude does nothing gertrude is just like a reactionary character all the characters are just people to hamlet you know what i mean 
Like, nobody's like, Hamlet's the only character in this fucking play. Other things about it? He's really handsome. I don't remember much about it because it wasn't in English, so I had to read it. And I, I do best when there's a... There's two. If you've seen Hater and you have things that you liked about it that you thought were very interesting choices, or you've seen Hamlet, which directed by Michael Amarita, starring Ethan Hawke, or you've seen Hater, directed by Vishal Bardwaj, starring Shahid Kapoor, leave a comment. Like, I'm for real trying to talk about Hamlet all the time. Leave a comment about things that you liked, about interesting choices that you think they made in these uh, adaptations slash versions slash productions, something. Uh, tell me a version of Hamlet I should see. Uh, if you have a favorite version of Hamlet that you've ever seen. Um, I love Hamlet. Thank you so much for watching all of my nonsense. It means very much if you made it to the end of either of these videos. And um, tell me about the lo your love of Hamlet.